Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start. We are back here today with another episode. We are on the road to WWE 2K20. 2K20! 20. Um, we are back here today for the third part of reviewing every game in the series. However, I believe the fourth overall episode. Um, it is the Shant and Dan the Man. That's me. Uh, Dan? You may be wondering why we uh, led with that. Dan. Why would you lead with Samoa Joe's theme song? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Didn't want to steal anything from uh, Simon Miller. Um, oh, I thought you were going to go with the Hulk Hogan <laughs> route. No. Uh, so, some news just dropped today uh, regarding 2K20 once again. Uh, we got all the matches in the women's uh, tower, but we also got to see both Samoa Joe and Buddy Murphy's entrances. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, those as well. Um, so where do you want to start? You want to start with the entrances? Yeah, let's because do it. Because we yeah, queued yeah, it up that way? Yeah, all right. Yeah. So how do you feel about, we'll say, let's, let's start with Joe. How Joe. do you feel about Joe's? I thought Joe's was fine. I noticed that the, the lighting was a little bright. Yeah. Um, not to the point where it was like hurting my eyes, but it was like let's 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 tune it down just a little bit. Because it kind of washed out the shadows. Yeah. Which the shadows are what kind of bring the realism to life. Exactly. Um, one of I mean I don't know about you, uh, but one of my favorite parts for certain matches I like to turn on the entrances and mm -hmm. just see all the superstars walk down to the ring. I've noticed that crowd reaction has been one of their biggest problems. Yeah. Where if everybody, if you guys uh, queue up the Samoa Joe or the Buddy Murphy entrance, you'll notice the crowd is kind of at like one, they're at like at a level five. So like normal, you know, crowd noise. The entrance theme hits and they're still at that level five, you know, um, level. Um, even when the superstar sometimes comes out, they're still at that same level. If the superstar like puts their hands up or does like their signature gesture, then you hear somewhat of a pop. Um, I'm hoping that they can improve that. It might be a little late for that. I don't know. We're just around the corner of this game coming out. Um, I do like the Joe chance. Yeah. I do feel like it's it's kind of overtaking everything else. I feel like if they maybe bring that down just a little bit, it'll yeah. be levelized with everything else. Um, Greg Hamilton as the announcer. Great addition. Wonderful announcer. Overall, uh, I thought it was fine. What did you think? Sorry. It's all right. Um... No, I, I, all in all, I liked it. Um, his, I liked more than Buddy's, which we'll talk about here in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, no, I, as far as the Joe chant itself goes, the, de the small detail that I mentioned to you when I watched it, uh, that I do like is the fact that it just kind of slowly dies. So you've got the entire, it's a, ni it's a nice, um, dynamic detail. Yeah. To have the crowd start with Joe. Joe, Joe, and then it gets, like, you start to shed ch little chunks of the group until you've only got probably 50 people still chanting, and then the, the chant ends. So it's it's funny to hear that, but I think that's <laughs> one of the necessary details to make it feel like you're watching yeah. the show. as opposed to having everybody cut off just all at once, Yeah, you know? Joe, Joe! And you're like, all right, I guess we're moving on. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I agree as far as the uh, pops go. I think that's something that's been missing. Yes. Uh, has that ever, like in this series, ever really been a good thing? Like, has it ever, have they ever really hit the mark on that? Or I think there's been a couple where you kind of get something, but then it's like one of those quick die off yeah. things again where it's like music hits. <sighs> that's about it. Yeah. Um, shut your mouth and here comes the pain did a good job where once you would see the superstar actually walk in there was a pop like for Steve Austin when he would go to each and every corner and put his hands up you yeah. would hear the pop um, but yeah as of like as of the 2k series and maybe a little bit before that that's been a very big problem where it's just like it's it's like at one level like yeah. one pop and then okay we're back to very one level flat. again yeah. yeah as for uh, Buddy Murphy uh, my big, uh, I'll talk about my big complaint here in a second, but something I, th I thought was really nice about his is the shadows, which we talked about. Um, the lighting's different on his versus Samoa Joe's, yeah. which I'm sure is consistent with his entrance. I don't recall seeing his entrance recently, but 
um, you've got all the, the like all the creases where his his muscles yeah. kind of block out the light. Right. You see the definition, and it looks really cool. Yes. But something that I'm concerned about with every model in the game at this point, having seen that, is the fact that his hair swings through his ear. Um, Much like real life. Exactly like real life. I don't know how many times a day I see hair flying through ears. Um, and so I'm like, you You mentioned, you went, well, with based on that, do you think we're going to see title belts going through clothing? Probably. Yes. Um, but uh, I'm I'm hoping, and I know we're, we're real close to the release, and we kind of talked about yeah. that as well. Um, maybe it was like an early render that they were like, we'll use this as the, probably, as the promo. Probably. And so they haven't quite finished fine tuning everything before they actually ship yeah. the game. Maybe. But I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, What's your either. take on Buddy? Um, Buddy Murphy, um, I thought it's cool. Again, cr- crowd noise were uh, my same sentiments as Samoa Joe. Um, I don't know if you saw this or picked it out, but his walk... Like, he seems to be, like, doing the same walk for, like, 15 seconds. Who, Buddy? Yeah. Yeah, but, and then, but, but like, Buddy seems And then pretty... he'll, like, juggle his, like, hands to, like, you know, like, to stretch and warm up. But, like, there's, like, this weird, like, robotic walk that it's he does for 15. Monotonous, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, but then I guess at that point we're nitpicking. But, um, <laughs> overall, uh, I, I thought it was good. Lighting was better. Uh, commentary team, honestly, the commentary, I think, is top-notch during entrances. Then when we get to matches, it's like, oh, we're back to generic commentary. Yeah. Um, Something I, I would like to see that I, I, I... And this is a small detail that I think will just, again, add to the realism and may not take that much work to add in, is more vari- variance in the crowd in terms of their their physical actions. Because you look at the crowd when it does that close up, and you've got like everybody doing the double arms up yeah. and the one arm pump. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more variance where you just, I don't know, watch Have someone some, on watch their some phone, footage. someone yeah. maybe snacking on something. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it's just a small detail, but yeah. it, you go, oh, that, that's the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like when uh, when event I when Avengers Endgame came out, I saw a thing online that talked about. Um, Thanos and how in the close up shots on Thanos like you've got actual like hair on him and you can see all the pores and it's those small details that yeah. really make the realism yeah. stand yeah. out and then they kind of lose some of those details when it's further away because right. it doesn't matter yeah. 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 but that's a situation where just having that one person like those two people in the background who are not really paying attention and yeah. they talk that's a thing that that's happens. a thing yeah so having two people talking, somebody who's on the phone or taking a picture with the phone, yeah, uh, the one fist, fist bump, bump guy, yeah. and then you can have somebody who's just clapping away because I don't know if they really have clappers in the crowd, but yeah, uh, it just it's just yeah. mix it up, yeah. But that's where I'm at on that. But the big marquee announcement, really, like I, I guess getting a glimpse at the actual game gameplay is yeah. always nice, but right. The big marquee announcement out of this is that now we know the 15 playable matches within the Women's Evolution um, showcase. Uh, so, obviously, this is focusing around the four horsewomen of the WWE. Charlotte Flair, woo! Becky the Man Lynch, uh, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. Anyway, <laughs> so... I want... I- so I, I, I don't. I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off, but uh, you know how we were just talking about like crowd, like the the the, the, the Joe Chance like dying down. Yeah. As you're listing all four horsemen, you can see like the the peak in your voice, like how you're excited, and then you just like you drop it once mm, you get sorry, this. Show. <laughs> um, I, so I watched. I did watch the clip of her and Bailey jumping Charlotte, and I, the, I that's what we're getting here in the near future. We're gonna get Becky and Charlotte versus Sasha. And, I don't. I don't uh, know how Bailey. I feel about it. I don't know either, but maybe it'll go the way we talked about on the main channel, where we see these four going going to battle, and then you have the other four, and then and what do we get, Dan? Four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. There it is. By uh, the way, check out the Anything Wrestling podcast on this same page. It's a side series where it's myself, Dan, the man, and uh, the third guy, the commish. The uh, third man. The third man. Who's the third man? Well, it's the commish. 
uh, as we talk <laughs> about wrestling previews, reviews, and all that. But Dan, go ahead with those matches. All right, so going into WWE 2K20, 2K Showcase, the women's evolution. <gasps> That's mm. a mouthful. You got Charlotte versus Charlotte with Rick versus Natty. I'm going to call her Natty forever. Sorry, I, I watched Total sorry. Divas, guys. Who doesn't? Um, Charlotte Flair versus Rick. No. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte Flair. Now with that's Rick. a match. Ah, <laughs> uh, talk about a fantasy match. Charlotte with Rick versus Natty with Brett. There we go. Uh, Bret Hart at Takeover. Uh, Takeover Rival, where we saw Sasha and Charlotte and Bailey and Becky against each other. Uh, Takeover Brooklyn with the very the classic Bailey versus Sasha match. There it is. Uh, Night of Champions 2015 mm. feels like forever ago. Where you had uh, Charlotte fe- uh, representing Team PCB versus Nikki Bella featuring Team Bella, which I think was their Felicia name, Fox right? and yeah, Brie Bella, yeah. Because Bad was the was Sasha and Tamina and Alicia. Uh, Alicia. Was there another uh, one? Wait, um, PCB was sorry, um, Paige, Charlotte, not no. Alicia, Na- Naomi. Naomi, yes. I don't remember. It's <laughs> it's uh, WrestleMania 32. Uh, Charlotte Flair again versus Ric Flair. Uh, Charlotte <laughs> with Rick versus Becky and Charlotte Sasha. Jesus! Wow, Dad. I'm trying to burn through them real fast. It's alright. It's alright. Charlotte with her dad versus Becky and Sasha. Then a uh, Raw. It's Sa- a triple threat. It's not a two on one, by the way. Yeah. Sasha and Charlotte go against each other. Charlotte with Dana Brooke. Apparently, Charlotte's real into managers. <laughs> um, backlash. Becky Lynch. Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Naomi, Natty, and Nikki Bella all facing each other. Hell in a Cell, Charlotte versus Sasha, solid match. Elimination Chamber, Becky versus Mickey James. Raw, Bailey versus Charlotte. Fast Lane, Sasha versus Nia. WrestleMania 33, Bailey, Charlotte, Nia Banks. Okay. 34. <sighs> Charlotte versus Asuka. These are the big three, honestly, I think. The, these and the, the Bailey uh, yeah, and Sasha, Sasha match. Yeah. Uh, Evolution, where we saw Becky and Charlotte. Great match. And then WrestleMania 35, mm-hmm. where we saw Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Ronda go against each other in the winner takes all match. Um, so, th- with that, do you think they're going to feature the botched finish? Or. I can imagine that it cuts to a cutscene where you see the uh, during the three count it's blacked out and then it comes back up again. And Becky's got the belts. Uh, yeah. Um, if if we're gonna be serious for a minute, um, that'd be pretty cinematic. That'd be cool. <laughs> if they want to avoid the. <laughs> or they or they cut to the crowd during the three count and then cut back to Becky. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like Dan, you and I we talked about this last time. I'm kind of done with this whole let's replay matches from four or five years ago yeah. and unlock their attires from that night or the arena that night. Like, I get it. Like, at this time, it's the woman's, you know, evolution. Becky Lynch is on the cover. It's all about the women. Like, that's great. But it's just, I would have much rather had, like, like a female season mode where it's all original gameplay it's all original storylines and like no matter like whatever choice you make like you branch out into like different stuff as opposed to yeah let's go back and replay that one match where i have to complete a je- objectives and all i get is the attires in the arena from that night yeah so like i'm sorry like i i kind of pissed all over the whole thing but it's like can we <laughs> not do this anymore yeah uh, how do you feel um so i mean if it weren't beaten into the ground at this point, I'd probably be more excited about it because I I like I like a lot of these matches and to play through them is going to be fun. But we've done this gameplay before. We know how it goes. It's it's not going to be any different than it was the last time. Um now when we get into talking about the four games cuz I kind of breezed through all the wikipedias before I printed out my my references. Um you had you had story modes up until 2013 I think it said roughly um and then they re- kind of reintroduced the or the story aspect of it last year um they might have had it I don't did they have it the year before something where you played through a story or was it through just the showcase bullshit 
the year before was 18. Yeah. There was no showcase in 18. Yeah, there was no showcase. Oh, no. It was just universe mode and, and uh, my career mode, but it, it yeah. sucked, like, real bad. But my... Wh- I, I didn't play, I, like, that's how much it sucked. My career? Yeah. It's like where you start off in NXT and yeah. uh, Albert is your... Co- or, um... Matt, Matt Bloom, Matt uh, and like you have to play like fifty like you know uh, training matches, and then you get onto the main roster, and then it's like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that sounds stupid. Um, um, and you're still a sixty-five, even though you're a WWE champion. Yeah, la- last year I think was a decent. It was general story yeah. with some misfires. Yeah. And obviously the mechanic of ending the whole thing at, at sixty-five still sucks. Um, and as we've talked about, not being able to use your superstar in yes. exhibition mode. Yes. I don't know if you ever get to unlock that person to use them in exhibition mode, and if not, that's uh, something for y'all to fix over there at 2K. Are you listening? What what what, what, what do you think of these 15 matches? I mean... the Oh, the, for the women's matches? Yeah. Um, like I said... Like the there, mode. There's four? Four matches that really call out to me out of all of them. And those were the triple threat at Mania. Right. The, the the you know which one I'm talking about the triple threat threat at Mania, the match at Evolution, uh, Charlotte Nowska, uh, which I'm s- <laughs> we're so bitter we're still so bitter about that, and then where are you at where where the hell are you at and then uh, Takeover Brooklyn, um, honestly the rest of them I don't really I don't really care yeah definitely don't care about Charlotte versus Natty. Like the the rival match, which is the four of them that makes sense to have in here yeah. too. Um, PCB versus Team Bella, I don't care. Uh, Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, that one, even that one makes sense. But like when you start incorporating people with the, that we don't care about, or you start like we've got Sasha versus Charlotte with Dana, and we have the the Hell in a Cell match. I honestly, I thought this would have been a great like upgrade. Was if you had the um, first ever um, uh, tag team women tag team match, where now in the elimination chamber you can have teams as yeah. opposed to just six competitors. I thought that would be a good way to introduce a new match and to implement this as okay the journey of like the four yeah. horse women. But that match didn't make it. We're not getting a tag uh, elimination chamber match. That's too bad. Yes. Anyway. So, um, uh, 2K Showcase includes 15 playable instant classic matches, spanning the group's meteoric rise over the last five years. Easy calling a classic. <laughs> Players will unlock characters, um, attire parts, titles, and more as they progress. I love how they make it sound mysterious. Unlock superstars, attires, and it's like, I wonder what's that, what that, what, what that's going to be. <laughs> yeah... And it says, uh, in their own words, with exclusive live action footage, are they sitting the four of them down in a ring to like do in, do commentary that plays in between each match, like they are do? Are they? Because th- well, this is a showcase too, right? This is a showcase. This is a showcase. Yeah, this is the well, showcase. Well, Ro- Roman's isn't a showcase, but it, they're probably going to do it like they did Brian's last year, where he does the commentary in between every single match. Roman's is tower. Yeah, I know, but I know they did the the Roman preview video. Which is the same, right? It looks like the as, same as the Brian. Yeah, maybe. So it's maybe. probably gonna be the same probably. thing. They're probably they're either gonna sit all four in a in a room and have them talk about their respective matches, or just kind of talk in general. Yeah. Or it's gonna be like they probably had them all in in an area, and then they were like, "All right, so Sa- Sasha and Charlotte, sit down, and talk about the Hell in a Cell." Match. You're right. Yeah. Blah. And so each match is gonna change, yeah. where you'll see just the people involved. Um. Yeah. I. I mean. Like I said, there's so looking back, the three big ones: the Hell in a Cell, the uh, Brooklyn, the Brooklyn. I think those are and and the the one where it's all f- four of them at rival are probably the only six matches on this thing that I like really care about. Yeah. Um. That's less than half, by the way. Yeah. So. Eh. It might be fine, but like, like we we're not excited. Bottom line, not really. Uh, at least I'm not. Not really. I'm like, okay, let's play it, because for me, it's like I just need to play it to unlock everything. Like that's like the the sickness in me. Yeah. Um. And, and like I said, uh, I I don't really like the way that it's set up. I'd rat like honestly, I would rather that you just play the match. 
as opposed to have to, having to follow a specific script of things. Yeah. Like, just have it be like a damage thing or like a land in a position thing, not like you have to perform a specific action. Yeah. Because that's why I'm still stuck on the fucking Brian Randy match. I haven't gone back to try and do that in months. Yeah. But the fact that that got me caught up because I kept timing, I, I think, because I think I'm supposed to tap him? Is that how it's supposed to end? Is I'm supposed the to raw submit? match? The Where one, he gets yeah. the kendo stick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm supposed to submit him, and for some reason, he always gets a finisher, hits me with the RKO, and I'm screwed. I go, what the hell is the point of this? Realism. So, I'm mad about that. Um, Randy burying Daniel Bryan like he buries everybody else. Wow. <laughs> Stupid. Up. Stupid! Um, but yeah. Do you have any critiques about the women's showcase? Um... I'm probably on the same page with you. Like, those are, like, the three or four matches where I'm like, okay, this would be cool to, like, see, like, well, how the cutscene plays out, you yeah. know? Um, but the other ones... Or hearing I'm, the commentary on those specific matches. Yeah. That's gonna be nice. Which, which but... by the way, they, they never do a good job of that. Like... I mean, I mean the girls talking about The, the girls talking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, like, the, the during the match commentary, like, it's so, like... It, like, Michael Cole and, like, whoever is doing it, they sound like they're, they're, like, they're, they're bored with their lives. It's like... Oh, they're the Bailey to Belly suplex. One, two, three. Bailey got her, and it's like, that's it. You're so you're so like, excited, my Maggle, Maggle Cole. Like, dude, tune down the excitement, man. Like, <laughs> I, WWE posted a top ten video recently, and I can't remember what the hell the theme was. But the first match is playing, and it's from like, fucking nineteen eighty six or something. And the commentary, I think, was. Michael Cole and JBL. So they like redubbed the commentary at some point, and then that's the version that they went with. And I, I was like, "This isn't right. Those two didn't work with the company at that point." <laughs> it was very confusing. That was a side note. I'm sorry. I, I you send me that video. I gotta see that. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to track it down. Um, but I think we're square for 2K20. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on that one. So if any other news pops up between now and uh, next time. next time. You guys will get to hear us rant about that shit, too. So, uh, <laughs> with uh, that part of 2K20 address, we now jump into last time we did some of the SmackDown vs. Raw series. Now we're moving on. Today we're going to be reviewing WWE 12 all the way to WWE 2K15. Yes, the uh, transitionary period. Yes. Uh, did you want to start off with something? Then? You're the guy with the notes, so I don't know if there's something you wanted to... I mean, I can just kind of cue it up, and then, yeah, and sure. then you, you, we can dive in. Right. So, 2K12 was, uh, I should have, I should, I don't remember. Uh, who, who, was THQ still making the SmackDown vs. Raw were. series at the time? Yes. Okay, so this is one of THQ's last hurrahs. Yes. Um, and the big things here were Exhibition Mode, Universe Mode, Road to WrestleMania, and then I don't have the list of the roster here, which I can try and pull up on my phone as we're talking. But, so Exhibition Mode, um, they, let's see. They also had to create an arena for the first, well, it wasn't really create an arena, it was more like change the colors of the arena. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that was like a big uh, promotion but, thing. So the weak, strong grapple system from the past games had been removed. Characters now perform dis different moves based on their opponent's current physical state. Um, Again, limited gameplay. Yeah. Um, a new feature called Dynamic Comebacks gives players on the verge of losing the opportunity to successfully hit a combination of moves to gain two finishing moves, a uh, new wake-up talents, um, and breaking point submission minigame. Oh, that's where that was introduced? Uh, I don't first. remember it, but I feel like I hated it. Because um, I think I have this game. I think I have 12. I actually never got to experience 12. It's right when... So this is... They transitioned from PS2 to PS3. Yeah. Um, I didn't I had an Xbox 360. Oh, yeah, th <laughs> yeah, there was that too. Um, but they went to next gen. Um, I was still stuck on last gen, and I'm like, okay, maybe we'll skip for this year. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get to experience it, but I think the one thing that just stands out from this is the the career mode, the road to WrestleMania, or yeah. whatever they were calling it, because I noticed it had like this WCW versus WWE theme to it, which is something that a lot of people were asking for for years, and finally. TH2 gave it to us. Now, was that on this one or on 13? That was on this one. Where you play as like a custom character oh, and there's like WCW, um, there's like a WCW theme to it where like yeah. there's Nash and um, Arn Anderson and all those guys. Um, 
Yeah, you tell me. I mean, you experienced 12 uh, feelings, sentiments, thoughts, comments. Um, so... Re- reading through this one and remembering that I think I played it, I think the controls threw me off. Okay. Coming from t- uh, from SmackDown versus Raw. Yeah. Um, I don't recall liking the breaking point submission system, but I also don't remember really what it consisted of. It's basically the breaking point logo comes up, yeah. and then you have to like, oh you fill you, you button fill match and then you button fill button it up. Okay. Yeah. I actually think I like that more than the. <laughs> well, see, the one problem with that, I don't know if this was prevalent in 12, but uh, we're going to talk about 13 in a second, but if you had enough damage, you were kind of already at the end, yeah. and it's like end game. Like, you knew that you were going to tap, which kind of sucked because it's like, well, now I don't really have a chance. Yeah. I, I, I think the reason that I'm more inclined toward that, though, than what we currently have um, is the fact that... The, and it's it's tough because it sucks when you're the one in that position but it also once you get your opponent in that position you're like good finally yeah um but in the current one like with the the little movie wheel the thing, thing yeah. yeah the bar gets bigger but if you're not good with manipulating that then you're shot on that anyway yeah and then because that that one's actually competing against the essentially the skill level of the yeah. other person which is right. in essence okay but then it's stacked against people like me who can't get the right. gist of that one. And then if you do the button mashing, in general, that might be fine, too. Yeah. Or not the button. Well, it's sort of button mashing. Yeah, yeah. It's structured button mashing. Yeah. Um, that one caters more toward me, but in instances like the fucking tower, where the difficulty is cranked up, right? you can't tap somebody out on a generic submission move. Yeah. And you're lucky if you can submit them on, on a finisher. And you're like... Come on. So I think that's where these two kind of kind of piss me off. Yeah. Um, universe mode, I I never really played because I think I, that was like this that was like the GM mode replacement, but it wasn't really GM mode. I'm gonna be honest with you, I never got into universe mode, and yeah. I still really don't understand what it's for. I think it's just you build your own programming, but there's no end game to it. Like at least in GM mode, it was show versus show. There yeah. was a purpose to yeah. it. Versus universe, which was just. Uh, Sandbox mode is a good way to describe it. It's where you can just kind of throw whatever you want at the wall. Oh, my ideal story would be this. But it seemed like a lot of work for minimal enjoyment, which is why I never got into it. Right. Um, And then Road to WrestleMania, uh, I think it was was in this one and and not... It wasn't in 13. No. replaced it with Attitude Era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Road to WrestleMania, I, I liked because I've always been the story-driven person. Yes. Um, and so that's why I was happy that we saw that. Um, they adjusted the the animation system in this one. Um, but that's about it. I mean, there were some minor changes. Uh, yeah. Some, some decent developments and some not so much. Uh, WWE 12. Stop it. 12. <laughs> roster so go ahead what are, what are your thoughts while i pull this up um again i never really experienced wwe 12 um but just kind of like seeing like gameplay from it like now just kind of like seeing like the evolution um it seems like it was okay for the time being um but like there really isn't enough for me to be like yeah let's let me go back and let me experience it again i think the biggest driving point was the the rest of the road to wrestlemania where it was all original storylines and you get to play it and you get all these different scenarios um i thought it was cool to have like the wcw theme in there uh where you had various superstars you had some arenas which apparently was like custom created it wasn't the original from back in the day which kind of kills it um but overall like yeah it, like i think it was actually a good foundation for what came the next two years uh, so it's like this was kind of like the prototype, and thirteen and fourteen were kind of like your your end product. Um, but yeah, how many members are we looking at on the roster? So with this one, and I think there's a couple of managers in here, and there's a couple who may not be playable. But ninety one wow f- uh, portraits on this page. So that's a lot of people. Like yeah. that's I think the biggest one we've seen so far. The right. biggest the biggest roster, and. A lot of them are like there's no notable names. I think this is one of the mo- the the deepest um, female rosters that they had. You got Beth, Nikki, uh, where'd they go? 
Lay Cool, Kelly Kelly, Maurice, Natty, uh, The Bellas, uh, Trish, Vicky. Was Vicky a playable? She was the DLC. Uh, yeah, she was playable. But so, a, a decent female yeah. roster on here. Um, and a lot of a lot of miscellaneous people. <laughs> Michael McGillicuddy, Mason Ryan. Uh, Nexus. Oh, I skipped over Karma. Karma was in this one. Uh, Husky Harris. <laughs> Wonder what happened to him. Weird. He probably took like a vacation down to the bayou. Um, oh, Fo Fox is in here. That was her debut, actually, I believe. Alicia. But I think this was kind of when they first started to dabble with the NXT people. Because you have Brian, Zeke, uh, Zeke Jackson, Drew McIntyre. Uh, but, yeah. This is where we, we cross over from those, like... 60-ish yeah. member rosters to where you start to get more people, more legends, some variant characters because you had Classic Edge and Christian uh, in there as well. Oh, so there were, I was just going to say, not as much duplicates as before, but... Correct. Yeah. But yeah, you had a lot of legends in here because um, I'll burn through a couple of those real quick. Arn Anderson, Axe, and whatever his name is, Smash? From Axe Demolition. Smash? Yeah. From Demolition. Uh, Hawk? Hawk? An Hawk, animal? Hawk and animal, yeah. Yeah. Um, Lawler was in there. Uh, Jim Ross is on here. Kane, Masked Kane, which I think I read on here, was uh, <laughs> released as a uh, Make Good DLC for a minute because there were some issues at release, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so they were like, take take this Kane, have him for free. So they released <laughs> him for free for a couple of weeks, and then he and then you had to pay for him. But, uh... Timing. But, yeah. So, there you go. That's what we got on that one. Yeah. And then, any final thoughts on 12 before we move? That's it. So, then, 13, featuring the illustrious uh, Cookie Monster Punk on the cover. Um, one of the things on the article talks about, and I've heard this before, WWE did not want him to yes. be the cover star. Yep. They wanted Sheamus. Sheamus. Yep. Um, and THQ was like, put him on the cover... Put him on the cover. Put him on the goddamn cover. And I don't know if they went against WWE and said, look, we're making the game. We're putting him on the goddamn cover. Yeah. Or if WWE just went, fine. <laughs> Maybe we'll put Sheamus on next year. And then they didn't. Because <laughs> they got your boy, The Rock. Uh, but anyway, so 2013. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the roster. It's all right. At the same time. Um, while you pull that up. Um, so, uh, I actually got a PS3 for the sole purpose of wanting to play WWE 13. I will say this, WWE 13, their advertising, their mm -hmm. promoting, their commercial was one of the best of all time. I think 13 was actually your last WWE game that got a lot of very good advertising out of it. Because yeah. I think this was the first year that they, well... I think it was the first year but they did the SummerSlam um, press conference where they had all the legends line up and you had Mike Tyson in there they had like three different um, yeah because it wasn't wasn't Mike it the, was the pre-order pre bonus um, they had the Austin 316 edition which I still have to this day and I hang on to it um, but yeah they had a few different versions um, good advertising very like a lot of hype like everything just like if you think back to wrestlemania back in the day like in uh, 16 17 18 um they had like the right theme music they had you know the the good commercials they had like the good advertising and i think wwe 13 did very much of that where it was you know um good advertising um like all those the special editions like it made sense it mm -hmm. wasn't just like oh here you go we'll give you a part of the ring canvas um <laughs> Yeah, no, I WWE 13, I thought, did a really good job with that advertising, getting the product out there. But go ahead. Uh, so we'll jump in with this, and then we can talk more about some of the more some of the other details. Uh, this one, uh, even bigger roster. However, to much to your chagrin, lots of duplicates. Yay! 109. Jesus. 109. And I'm gonna break. I'm just gonna say the core superstar that's repeated. Um, so you got Big Show. Uh, Jericho, Christian, uh, Triple H. <laughs> there were three versions of that. Uh, Edge. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I see him in there twice? No? Okay. Um, I think you have a bunch of Mick Foley's. Mark Henry. Two Litas. 
Um, two canes. Uh, three Undertakers, I think. Yeah, two canes, three Undertakers, and two The Rocks. The Rocks. Um, so lots of lots of duplication yes. in there. Um, and I'm sure this is probably when you were like, I'm tired of that. Technically, you had Big Show and Paul White. Because yeah. I don't know why. But I was okay with it. I didn't really like it. This was kind of at a point where I didn't really realize it, you know? Um, Jinder Mahal. <laughs> um, John Laurinaitis was in this game. He was. That is factual. Uh, oh, uh, two JBLs, too, technically. Oh, Bradshaw and JBL? Yeah. Um, but if we're going to talk about the game... Oh, and two Cenas. <laughs> was there two Cenas? There yes, there were two yeah. Cenas. Um... I think that this game uh, pretty much had everything. Yeah. Um, the create modes were top notch. This is when you still had a create a finisher, create a story. Um, you can screw around with the um, the Titan Trons, and you can make in your own. You could import music. Um, yeah. This was, I believe, the first time that they started doing like, oh, let's take real life stuff and put it in the game, which was okay because it was new. It hadn't been done before, so I wasn't beaten t t to death like the, the four horse women, you know, um, evolution showcase thing. Um, the Attitude Era was a fun mode to play. The fact that they kind of had like, um, because they had they they had like an off script mode where you would play like a bunch of like random attitude era matches and like unlock the Godfather or the Big Boss yeah. Man, which was kind of a cool like uh, perk. But what are your thoughts of uh, thirteen? Um, large roster, which I've always been a fan of. Um, obviously, we talked about how much duplication there is in there. I like a lot of the faces that are in there. I didn't actually play this one. Uh, much if I ever actually played it. So a lot of my stuff's going to be superficial. Yes. Um, I remember this one because uh, what I just read on here, the name of the downloadable contents. Um, this is the wrong one. Uh, where is it? You had the Attitude Era Superstars Pack, you had the, the WWE Superstars Pack, and then you had the You're Welcome in Five Different Languages Pack. I remember I got that one, yes. Because it featured Damian Sandow and Cesaro. Um, Hashtag Jesus. Push Cesaro. Um But yeah, I mean again, universe mode, uh nah. Again, I I didn't never really gotten into that. So. But you had attitude error mode and I think I might have rented this just to play that at one point because mm -hmm. I don't think I own this one. But uh this was uh, this was the Swan song for THQ. Um and I will just say this, we kind of got a little bit of like a rippling effect where it was Okay, 12 was, eh, how do we build on it? Mm -hmm. Out comes 13. And this trend continued into the next year where we got, Dan? 2K14. Um, <laughs> what was, what I was, was, I was the, trying what was to... The queue up? Just oh, uh, 30, the 30 years of WrestleMania mode and the streak mode. That's another thing. Uh... What, you're having a PTSD flashback? Never right mind. Now? Um... <laughs> He, I w he was still undefeated at the time. <laughs> he was. Uh, but we know what happened next oh, year. That was the wrong thing I wanted to click. Um, I will say this. 2K14, in my personal opinion, and what, I, what I've seen and read in the comment sections online, a lot of people agree that 2K14 was the last greatest wrestling game that was published. Yeah. The 30 years of WrestleMania I thought was top notch. Again, we were still new to the, hey, here's what happened in the past. Let's go back and play it. But this time, the best part about 2K14 was like, you can give it to anyone and go, hey, did you watch wrestling in the 80s, the 90s, the early millennium, the 2010s? Oh, and you, you did? You have that crossover. Yes, you have that crossover all generations. Um, great roster. The streak mode was actually pretty fun to play. Um, a, a lot of match type varieties. All of the create modes were still there. Um, this game just like it. Maybe if you look at it in 2019, you would be like, "Oh, this kind of isn't in there. This kind of isn't in there." But at the time, it was a solid, well-rounded game. Like everything was in there. Yeah. So, again, easily spend maybe like like 30 hours on create a story mode, which was like it was fun through the roof. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, so this one had 110, less cr less crossover, a couple of duplicates. 
You had Jericho. You had Hogan, Kane, Nash, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Ric Flair, Scott Hall, Shawn, The Rock, Triple H, Undertaker. Lesnar in here? I didn't yeah, know. they had two versions of Lesnar, the current day and the old school black trunk, so two oh, yeah. versions. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And Big Show. Um so but but these guys were all just the they were this era and retro. Yeah. Yeah. So it kept it more contained versus having seventeen versions. Uh granted, apparently you had three Kevin Nashes really, because you had diesel in there too. Yeah. Um, but that was only if you purchased like all the stuff. If you didn't, you really only had diesel. Yeah. If, you, if you didn't get T, uh, DLC, I was going to oh, say TLC. And, uh, what's his face? Scott Hall. Uh, Scott Hall, yeah. yeah. Razor. Yeah. Uh, not, But that's not the point. Point is, still, d- deep roster, big yes. names, uh, some miscellaneous random names. King Kong Bundy's in there. Yes. Um, I think this one has a pretty pretty deep female roster also, for the most part. To a certain extent, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, for goodness sake, you got Oksana in there. Um, <laughs> oh, Summer Rae, my best friend. Um, that there's a personal story there for Dan. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exhibition mode, the uh, 7 OMG moments added, 30 years of WrestleMania, the streak mode where you can either be the Undertaker or you can not be the Undertaker. Um, I love how you're, like, peaching that just so you don't say that one sentence that I don't want you to say. <laughs> uh, three DLC packs and... Well, well, I know one of them was like you get a few moves and a couple superstars. There was also a Legends pack, and I think there was a, a WCW, a, no, an NWO pack. Yeah, it doesn't really break it down, but it's got, uh, yeah, uh, NWO, new superstars, additional moves, and then pre-order bonuses, uh, bike, Biker Taker, and oh, yeah, Warrior. Okay. Um, I'm going to breeze through reception real quick. So okay. 2K14 received mixed uh, to positive reviews uh, with the Xbox 360 version receiving generally favorable reviews while the PS3 version got mixed or average. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. According to the review. Isn't which it like gave, the same thing? Uh, da, 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 maybe just a higher sample size because you had 42 reviews from uh, Xbox 360 and you had... 21 from uh, so that's like PS4. half yeah uh, IGN however gave it an 8.7 out of 10 saying it still lacks the brains to deliver competent AI, AI and commentators but 2K14 has more than enough brawn to make up for it 30 years of WrestleMania provides the strongest campaign backbone the series has had in a long time the in-ring action is faster and more fluid than it's been in years and thanks to WWE 2K14's continually expanding creation suite we're swimming in more options than we ever knew we wanted. So they really expanded the creation yes. suite like you talked about. So there was a lot of stuff. And they kind of carried that over going forward because there is a lot to the creation suite. Yes. Obviously, we've talked about the limitations within it. Yeah. But at least you've got choices. you got block mode. You can paint things. You can add. Right. Uh, you can Group build, images. You can build your David S. Pumpkins. Um but um, two things that I quickly wanted to bring up before we move on. First of all, I love the pacing in 2K14. Yeah. Uh, because as we now continue, uh, the pacing slows down dramatically. Like, really, really bad. Um, and the second thing is, did you play 2K14? Did you own 2K14? Uh, that's not the right one. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I think I went to, fif- I think I went to 15. Okay. But um, I, I, skipped, I think I skipped 14. What I was just going to say is that... If like there were certain superstars where if you selected them, you I don't know if this will make sense. You felt like you were playing as that superstar. Yeah. Two examples uh, was Hulk Hogan and mm-hmm. Ryback, where like if like they had specific counters, they had specific comebacks, they had specific like taunts and like things about them. Where it's like if, when you played as them, you felt like you were playing as as like Ryback or Hogan. It wasn't like. Oh, he just did a suplex, much like half the roster. Or oh, he just did a body slam. You know, it's yeah. like you felt like you were playing as, like it was specific to that character. Um, all in all, I will just say this before we move on. Two K fourteen, the last greatest wrestling game in my opinion. Pacing was good. Had all the modes that you could want. It spanned over all generations. It seemed like it was gonna be a work in progress, where two K fifteen would be something even more bigger. <sighs> However, Dan. 124. Now there's a, a lot of managers in there. And 
this game had a profuse amount of duplicates and I think this 2k15 is where it kind of came to my attention of okay let's cool it down with the duplicates yeah three Seamuses of all people two well, Rybacks was there three Seamus so oh Seamus, yeah Seamus, Seamus 2011 and Seamus right. uh, Hop I don't know what Hop is Hall of Pain maybe Hall of Pain yeah that's right they had the Mark Henry Hall of Pain DLC and they had a Legends DLC too um I will just say this. I experienced 2K15 on the PS3, uh, which was which it was kind of unique because you you could get the last gen version on the PS3, or you could get the next gen version on the PS4. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of duplicates. I felt like it didn't have all the modes that 2K14 had. Limited roster. Um, it did have a lot of debuts though, like a lot of uh, I think first time people from what I was seeing. Yeah. I, I just think 2K15 took a huge hit. Yeah. Because let's see what we got over here. Uh... So in this one, I believe this is the debut of Showcase Mode. This is the first yeah. one I had yeah. Showcase Mode. Yeah. Um, and that one... Da -da -da -da. Revealed Historical Mode. Uh, 2K Showcase. And it was... 33 matches, uh, highlighted by two rivalries, uh, John Cena and CM Punk, and... Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Yes. Um, which, that's kind of limiting. Like, at that point, now you're just focusing on two things, there's not a lot of variance, and honestly, doing... Th so that's more than 15 matches per rivalry. So 30. Well, yeah, there's 33 matches. Oh. But... To, to just to divide it up, that's 16 and a half matches yeah. per thing. Yeah. To play one story for 16 and a half matches, you're kind of like, dude, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Give me something with variance. Mix it up. That's why story mode and uh, my career mode is is good. Yeah. Uh, which I don't... Th uh, this one has my career. So I think this is... But this is where it's... This is, it's not, I don't think it was good, if I recall correctly. I think it was well, pretty scarce, right? If, if you got the PS3 version, you basically had like a road to NXT where you would play five matches and you would unlock a Rusev or a Corey Graves. If you had the PS4 version, I believe it, I, I, I believe it sucked. Yeah, because this says PS3 and Xbox 360 exclusive modes, who yeah. got NXT and Proving Ground. Yeah. And who got NXT was... Uh, replacing my career on those ones, uh, you get Neville, uh, Bo Dallas, Corey Graves in his one and only wrestling one and only game, uh, Rusev and Sami Zayn. Uh, you play through, you get them, and then once you've got them, uh, you've got Proving Ground where you can play against John Cena as each of these guys. And if you beat him with all five, then you can play as anybody. Is apparently how that broke down. Um, fun fact. Uh, but yeah, my career... So my career was, I guess, only on the next-gen consoles. Yes. Yep. Um, my career is reminiscent to story modes of earlier SmackDown games and No Mercy, in which decisions affected outcomes. Mode also features a morality system to allow players to decide whether they want to play as face or heel. Um... Con conceptually, based on that, it sounds like it's... It sounds good. But it wasn't. It probably yeah, it probably wasn't. Uh, creative suite, several features that were present in previous games like story designer, creative finisher, custom soundtracks removed from the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions for unknown reasons, nor are they present on the next gen consoles. Though Creative Diva, Paint Tool, Creative Championship, and Create an Arena still available. Um. So I mean, yeah, it. It sounds... It, it's been... There have been a lot of growing pains... Yeah. Moving through into this current era. And there's still certain things that 2K throws the dart and they miss. Yeah. Um, do I think that they can at some point? Hopefully in the near future. Hopefully in the next couple of versions. Hopefully in two months. Find something nice? Yes, I'm hoping. Because 2K has a big following with their other sports games. So I'd like to think that they would give it the same affection uh, that, that those get. However, I think the other ones 
there's the story mode, but then a lot of it is based around the online play, and I don't yeah. think they really stuck the landing on the online play with these ones. So then they kind of have to offset that by making the story content, which is what wrestling's all about. Yes. Nobody watches basketball for the story because they're typically, there's not supposed to be a story. Yeah. It's just people playing a sport. Right. Um, but wrestling is dr story driven. Yeah. It's what people will sometimes call a male soap opera. Yeah. And if you don't have that story element, then you lose your fan base. Yes. And we sit there and we go, this fucking sucks. This is a garbage, garbage wrestling game. So we're just looking for story rich, fluid gameplay. Is that so much to ask? There's other, like, there's first person shooters that feel better yeah. to play sometimes than these, these games have been. Um, One thing I was going to say that deliberately just really pisses me off is when, let's say, if in the previous year, if you have something, yeah. and then next year when the game comes out, oh, guess what? You got to pay extra to get what you had in the previous game. Yeah. For example, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. In 2K14, he was there. Yeah. He's on the roster, but 2K15, oh, but you got to pre-order it. And it's, yeah, it's like, why, Dan? Why? Why would you do that? Yeah, I'm sorry, but 2K15, I've said it before, probably one of the worst wrestling games. And I get it. People say, oh, but they were crossing over. It could give them some slack. 2K14 had everything. Yeah. You should just take 2K14 and just elevate it. Don't yeah. take shit out and go, wonder why people are saying this game sucks. Well, when you take shit out, that's what happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so going for so basically we bell curved because I, I and we'll talk about the other games next time yeah uh, 16, 17, 18 and 19, 19. Um, I enjoyed 19 more more or less um, I had skipped the other three I don't think I touched 16, 17 or 18 personally I could have sworn you bought 16 I could have sworn you bought 16 I might I might have done 16 and not 15 I did one of them okay um, so I can research that for next for next time. But uh, the I, I think what it sounds like is we're sort of bell curving, yeah. where we went real bad, and now we're kind of coming around to where these the games are starting to they're starting to feel better. They're starting to not leave that bad taste in your yeah. mouth. There's still a little bitterness to it. Yeah. Um, like licking an espresso bean. Yeah. Where you're like, mmm, and caffeine, but it tastes so bad. Um. But I think I think we're I think they're starting to find their their groove, starting yeah. to find a, a a tread, and hopefully they keep moving forward. Yeah. I I would really like to say that they are that they look back at the previous games uh, that they, like honestly they should just have a research team that's fucking playing like SmackDown versus Raw and the original SmackDown games and going, that's really good, that's real good. We should probably or that worked that that yeah. didn't work. We should bring that back. Yeah. That would that, then we'll get people, like I I'm I'm sorry, but especially with like and I'll I'll say this this is just a publicity thing with Xavier and and Tyler Breeze playing through and this is just self serving for me to a degree also, but them playing through general manager mode that put a spotlight back on that yeah and I'm sure that there was a little bit of a resurgence and people going back and playing two two thousand six yeah and being like oh GM mode it's so fun because I I did yeah um and if suddenly 2K20 drops and there was a GM mode back in there, people would be like, oh my god, I'm so <laughs> excited. Well, I know you would be excited. I would be excited. Um, do I think it's going to happen? No. no. But it'd be a, it would have been a, a good way to ca to to strike while the, the iron's hot. Yes. Um, but maybe next year. Maybe next maybe. year. With that, looking at 12 to 15, if you could pick your most favorite and your least favorite which one would you pick even though i know you you i think for you like it's kind of like you experience one or two but you missed out on the other three yeah um i would probably say i'd probably say i would probably say 13 sounds like it was the most interesting and if i played it i think the attitude error mode is probably what sold me on it yeah cuz uh, i i work i feel like i remember seeing the screen and playing through that and I think that that was a fun gameplay experience yeah. so I'll, I'll go with 13 and your least it, it's, it's, it's kind of skewed because sounds like 15 was pretty was pretty shallow yeah um, and we've talked about how I like rich yes content games so well I mean who doesn't 
Yeah. yeah. So I'll say I'll say I'll say fifteen is my 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 low point on these ones. Fair enough. Uh, if it wasn't obvious over the last ten minutes that I've been talking about it, two K fourteen was my absolute favorite out of that. And uh, if it really wasn't obvious over the last five minutes, two K fifteen was the absolute worst. Um, with that said, I think that concludes this week's episode. Um, we will be back next time for the final part uh, where we uh, review 16 to 19. Um, and uh, Dan, is there anything that you want to say before we... I mean, I, I, I just want to say that uh, hopefully we get some more news next week to follow up on the, the excitement, sort of excitement, uh, <laughs> surrounding the uh, women's 2K showcase. Yeah. Um, or but, just more information, like, outside of the showcase. Yeah, like details. New gameplay, new yeah. detail. Like, give me something. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's about it. But... If we can address address that for a second. Yeah. Has it not been pissing you off at the rate that they've been revealing information? It's like one thing. It's one like thing. one little sprinkle, like, and then, like, we're gone for two weeks, and then it's like one more sprinkle. <laughs> yeah. Um... Cause yeah, like, a little bit. Because, like, again, I, I, I'm beating a dead horse with this, but it's, like, with 13, with 14, it was, like, you would get... I think something special that they did for 13 and 14 was every two days, they yeah. would re- uh, reveal a entrance and a yeah. finisher. Like, John Cena, entrance, finisher. Two yeah. days later, The Rock, entrance, finisher. Yeah. So, it's, like, they would kind of give you something until release date. Yeah, where now it's, like... It's, like, a little a little piece, and that, but you're... We're, is there a game this year? Oh, we're six there weeks it is. out from release, and you want me to pre-order it with this limited amount of information yeah. you've given me. And, and I mean, I, they didn't reveal information like late this year. Like yeah. I remember, I think it's only been three weeks. Yeah, people were like, "Is there going to be a two K twenty? Like, is yeah anyone?" <laughs> um, but yeah, again, like I, I goes back to my point before four or five years ago promoting advertising was at an all-time high now it's like <sighs> i feel yeah yeah but on that note i think that's about all we got for today so uh thanks for listening guys uh don't forget to save <laughs>